Howdy, insufferable demon fans. Crosser here. Now, there are a few games that I've had requests for, but among them, this is the one that I actually know something about. It's a Castlevania game, and we all know how much I love those. It's Area of Sorrow. Let's get started, shall we? Scoliosis. Now, here's the story. Try not to let it make your head explode. Okay, did everyone catch that? Good. Our hero, Soma Cruz, is going to be having problems. And here's one now. Did you have a pleasant nap? He said, in what I can only assume was a condescending tone. He needs answers now. The dickweed. We're in Dracula's castle. Okay, good to know. That makes it a Castlevania game. Which should be in Europe. But no, we're inside the solar eclipse. Well, that explains everything. And she just instinctively knows that he's telling the truth. Well, it's like this. Konami got confused during translation. And then a bunch of crap exploded. And then some cool stuff happened. The spirit of the creature enters Soma's body, and then he gets new powers. Must go to the master's chamber. Of course, he wants to go back, and this random stranger, we're gonna just do what he says pretty much. But don't worry, he'll put up a protective barrier. But death will most certainly find those who stay here too long, which is convenient because being a Castlevania game, I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to find death eventually anyway. That's a good question, buddy. Why don't you just be all vague and stuff and um, I'll go fight monsters. Because that's what it's going to boil down to. Now, this game... It's not my most favorite Castlevania game, but it's still pretty good. Um, you get souls from monsters. Right now we've got one, the winged skeleton, which is what you call a bullet soul, which is basically like daggers and axes in the other Castlevania games. You hit up and attack and it throws something. Also, you can equip stuff. We've got basically dick all to work with so far. And items, again like in Symphony of the Night and abilities, which are the big cool stuff that we get. 
and some other stuff that doesn't matter as much, including a bestiary. So, let's get this started. Like any decent Castlevania game, we get to start off slaying zombies in a flat corridor, collecting items from candles, such as hearts and coins, which we can use later to buy things. Oh, there's that, uh, there's that spear I was talking about. As far as initial attacks go, the winged skeleton soul is a pretty good one for throwing those spears, because let's face it, who doesn't enjoy just tearing the hell out of zombies with a pitched spear? Here's a short sword. We get to use that equipment menu I was talking about. It's very slow and weak. Ah, here we go. We've got a new couple of souls already. The Gravekeeper soul is one of those ability souls, and we can use it by hitting the L button in this case. And let's, uh, let's check the new souls we get, like the Merman. It's not great, but it's got a pretty good piercing quality to it, so uh, we'll try it out a bit. A little expensive, but wait a minute. Is there something up here? Ah, yes. More equipment. Unfortunately, unlike in Symphony of the Night, this does not render cape changes. But considering it's not a really important item to begin with, that's understandable. Let's do a little bit of exploration here. Your MP slowly refills, which is your equivalent of hearts. And the squirt gun does more damage, but the spear will get in extra hits. Which is why I'm going to hang on to that. And the hearts, instead of being just straight ammo, is your MP in this game. So whenever you get hearts, your MP refills. We go through there, we fight a boss. Let's grab some stuff first. Because I do so enjoy getting stuff. Assuming we find any here. Well... Not so much. Aha! That was a waste. Aha! Any kind of sensible person would wait until their hearts refill. But not me, because we have a Paranthropus to fight. Or a Creaking Skull in this translation. If you position your spears correctly, you can get three hits per which isn't bad. This guy's pretty easy to dodge. When he starts swinging that bone, you just get ooh, way back. The fireball, you can jump, you can duck, or you can slash it out of midair. And blammo. Pimp sword. Unfortunately, we don't get automatic free souls from beating bosses, which would be cool, but we do get a health refill. And the creepy, whippy, flying eye guy. If I could get his power early on, that would be awesome. Because this is one of those games where secret hidden rooms are actually really hard to find. But there's one. We'll just zip right along. Fortunately, our main protagonist in this game is not water-soluble. Ah, now here's one of those souls that we need that we activate with the R button on the Game Boy Advance. While we hold it down, this soul causes us to fall slower. 
so we can make some of those tricky jumps that you've heard all about. And it uses hearts on a time-based type of dealie. Oh, and also we've got a save room. Excellent. Automatic refill of uh, hearts and health as well. Very useful. Whoops. I just love throwing spears. What can I say? It's satisfying for some reason. Ah, yes. Blue crows. An old foe. And these guys... They're scary, but they are not tough. So we just move on. White Dragon. We've seen these guys before. We've dealt with your kind. Watch out for that fire, though. No one likes getting a big face full of... Bone Dragon. Or Fire. Alright, mister. There we go. That's unfortunate. Last time I went through here, I got that Bone Dragon soul on the first try. Now we've got Zombie Soldiers. Ooh! He dropped a Combat Knife. That is a good deal. Way more powerful, and I think it's faster, too. Well, it's not faster, but it is more powerful. These appear to be World War II soldiers. And some free armor. Leather plate is more protective than casual clothes. Casual clothes, in this instance, apparently a long flowing white overcoat. Which is fashionable, don't get me wrong. But I wouldn't trust it to stop a you know, a uh, flung bone that's on fire, or whatever the hell else accosts me in the castle of Dracula. Oh yeah, much better with a combat knife. Unlike Symphony of the Night, the uh, weapons in this game don't tend to have special attacks associated with them. Or at least not that I'm familiar with. That's okay, because we get enough new and different stuff to make it not really a problem. Or issue, or whatever you'd care to call it. Whee! I might not be able to get up there yet. Let's take one more jump at it. Nah, I'm not going to be able to make that yet. That's okay. We'll go around. Come at it from the other side. Things have a tendency to work out eventually. That went a lot better. And a scarf. What does the scarf do? I believe that's extra luck. Nope, more defense than the cape. Which is good. Worst comes to worst, we can check our ye old map. Very necessary. But that's about all the time I have for this one. So when we come back, we'll explore more of the new and improved Eclipse located Castlevania. Till then, this is Rosser. Take a drink.